The Sentinel is known to be reliable, fearless, disciplined, consistent, courageous, motivated, and skillful. So do what you feel passionate about. Take chances. All these qualities start from the mind. Your mind can be your worst enemy or your most powerful weapon. The world becomes your library to help you become better at your craft. Is this the dagger? Learn how to achieve greatness and tap into the Sentinel Mindset. What's up, everybody? Hope you're doing well. We have a very special episode today, and this episode is called 10 Ways to Kill Your Interview. And I think it's important that people that are on a regular basis now more than ever looking for jobs, I think that they're positioning themselves to give themselves the best potential head start against other applicants. What I love about this topic is uh, it seems like common sense, but they say common sense isn't common. So That's right. Let's, let's dive in. That's right. Okay, awesome. So uh, we're going to list nine points that we feel if you do this, you'll be able to 100% capitalize your opportunity. Now, just for some like insight, for us as an organization, we see hundreds of people on a monthly basis. We receive thousands of emails on a regular basis of responses and resumes but as, as applications as applications but we see a lot of people and we love it we enjoy it because we got, always get to see different people but what blows our minds are, is that a lot of the things that we when we put this together again what mike said it's going to be common sense but when you're reading through this list understand that they're very important and it's not just for security understand that this is for any any job you apply for Put these things into into application of, of, of yourself, prepare for it, and you'll have a high chance. So, Mike, why don't we kick off number one? This is kind of one that I think uh, it's so obvious that we wouldn't have to talk about it, but it's probably, as I have it listed as number one, the number one most broken, broken rule of, of killing your interview. Go on, why don't we go into that? Number one, arrive early. That means don't be late. Okay, so the, the, like again, uh, I, I want to throw this out here right now. We probably on a regular basis, probably four or five times a week, we have somebody, Mike, that comes in and they say, oh man, uh, uh, I'm sorry I was late. Or they come in late and they don't say nothing. Yeah. And when we ask them. Or they utter the words traffic. Yeah, traffic. Traffic, family, I didn't know how far this was. Um, when you hear any of that, you're instantly disqualifying disqualifying yourself from the process this yeah. is your opportunity to shine this is your opportunity to tell your brand new prospect employer now should someone be on time so no being on time in an interview in my honest opinion is the reason why they're late yeah exactly there yeah. is the reason why they're late what's yeah. that saying that says uh if you're on time you're late if you're on time you're late and if you are early you're on time Okay, there you go. It's the okay. reverse. That's a good T-shirt. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> so here, this up. If you're gonna do, if you're coming for an interview, find out where that place is. Why don't you go on Waze, go on Google Maps, and then from there, plan your route and get there early. Give yourself enough time where if anything happens, you have enough time to kind of get there. Yeah, I can't find the space. I can't find a parking spot. You have enough time. And that's that's how a professional approaches the work. Yes. Right. I mean, just to know the people that we're looking for are people who plan ahead. Yes. They. Do an advance. Look it up if you've never done a security advance. They plan their routes. They plan where they're going to park. Uh, they don't just, you know, they're not at the mercy of bad traffic. That's okay? right. Especially on the day of your interview. That's right. And All my right. recommendation is minimum 30 minutes early. That's okay. my recommendation. I, me personally, I come in an hour early, whatever I do, because yeah. I give myself. But that's my recommendation, 30 minutes. And we'll say why. Let's just say it quickly. It's just, it's not about even the time. It's about just be good to yourself. When you're early... And you can get a coffee. You can get your thoughts together. You can make that call to mom while you're waiting before you go up to the office. Those are all good things for you. You, you know, we all know you're not at your best when you're stressed. That's right. Right? That's right. Just picture the family uh, that is trying to race to the airport. Exactly. If they're there early, they can actually may maybe enjoy the process. Right? There you go. Okay, so number two. Number two, know the company that you're applying to. Exactly. Now, Okay, hold what, on. Are you, what are you talking about? What, 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 what do you mean, know the company? I applied to you. That means I want to work for you, right? Well, guess what? In our industry, again, and this is happening probably in every industry, people apply to several jobs. Very, you know, I mean, it happens on a regular basis. And I can tell you for myself, I remember very vividly when I was looking to apply to the police force two decades ago that I applied to like four of them. And at the end of the day, when I applied to each individual workforce, they each had a very, even though the, it was the same kind of job, they all had different vision statements. 
uh, uh, different geography. And you have to know these things. And I say this because the amount of times people come here to this company and they don't know a single thing about the organization because they think it's like their last experience throws them off. And well, it's, you know what I mean? Yeah, I mean, imagine, look, let's relate it to the dating game. Right. Okay. And someone receives a phone call and they're like, uh, who is this? Right. Because they gave their number to like 12 different people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, make the company feel special. That's right. You know, expect it. That, and it's not even that. I mean, I know that in, in interviews, there's a leading question. Tell us what you know about Sentinel. That's right. And what, if, what, what do you think about the person who says, oh, I don't know anything? That's right. Well, to me, it shows me that since you don't know much about us, you do not know what we stand for. And you actually don't even understand or, or recognize the X factor about us as an organization. And if you don't recognize that, it probably also shows me that you probably can output to what we're looking for because you haven't linked it. In fact, what you've done is you probably thought, hey, they're just like everybody else. Yeah, exactly. That's no, why I look at it. Which is a great segue into number three, which is dress to impress. Okay. So there's a lot of, there's, I think there's a lot of thoughts around this, Mike. Some people might say, well, what do you mean exactly dress to impress? I mean, I just got to wear my, my, my clothes, right? Yeah, like wear know? a nice banana yellow jogging suit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which, by the way, we've had that happen before. <laughs> people have walked into, this, into, the, into our floor and they've had ripped jeans, earrings on. Um, and I'm talking more for the males. I mean, the females obviously have earrings as well. But anyways, it just goes into this. They come into the, to the uh, actual... Um, interview as if they literally crawled out of their bed yes okay and obviously you get a lot of other people that take it very seriously and have a suit okay or professional attire and uh, i have to tell you when we say dress to impress we truly mean that because this is again when we say arrive early dress to impress is our first opportunity to look at your presentation yeah well your clothes they speak for you that, absolutely that's do. the truth they speak to your integrity how you present and just know at Sentinel, we have a very, how would we say, a five-star a five star clientele. Yes. Our clients, they also, too, will care how you look when you walk in. That's right. They'll have confidence in your ability to, to do the job based on how you present. Yep. So look your best. One thing we say, be the bride, be the groom. Yes. Yep. I, I was going to say that, Mike. The, the one thing I'm pushing people is dress the way it's your wedding day. Yeah. On your wedding day, come and dress like that. Now, obviously, for the females, we're not expecting you for a bride's dress. <laughs> yeah, and for those guys who wear no socks to their wedding, yeah, we, exactly. you need to wear socks. That's okay? right, it's right. <laughs> but dress as if it's your wedding day. And again, if you take that advice, it also shows us that you care about your appearance. It cares about you not coming in looking shaggy. It cares that you are actually here to make a difference, to make an impression. Okay, another way that you make an impression is number four. Listen to instructions. The instructions on the application process, what's required of you, which are laid out in an email, some type of correspondence. Pay attention to those details. Absolutely. The amount of times that we give people direct instructions, we highlight it, we put it in bold, and all they have to do is just follow a simple instruction. Just so you know, for us as an organization, if you can follow simple instructions, it's showing us that you don't have the ability to comprehend I guess, simple instructions. And that could be a big strike against you, a very big strike. So understand there's elements where we say listen to instructions, read everything. Don't just scan it, read it. Um, the more you know, the better you're going to be prepared. Now, what's great about that, if you think about it, common sense, and if someone followed the instructions, something could come up, which leads us to our next point. Yes. Ask questions. Yes. Okay, and why yes. is it important for someone to be able to ask questions. Okay, so it shows us as the employer that you are interested in our organization. I mean, what we do on the back end is that we give people a very extensive experience. If you've ever gone to like Disney World or Universal Studios and you go through these interactive experiences, you kind of leave and like, wow, what did I just come out of? We do the exact same thing here and you'll only find out if you ever get a call from us. But you do get this interactive experience that is full of information that literally is designed for people to have all their, um, you know, their questions answered. However, we ask that question in the interview, and it's a very common, I mean, question in, is like, do you have any questions for us? Yeah, right? I mean, and I've heard you come out of interviews saying, "Man, that, this guy had a great question for me." That's right. He said, "Look, this is the vision. This is the kind of his own personal mission statement for his career." Right. And he's asked you. It. I remember this one individual asked you, "How does what he wants to have happen in his career line up?" with the company objective. That's right. And he asked you, what did you see there? That's right. Right. And look, it could have been a planned question, but strategically, if you're asking questions, you are showing your employer that you are interested yes. in knowing more. So it's a big 
Big plus. Okay, one way that you show you're interested is our next point. Don't be shy. Yes. Okay. This is your opportunity to sell yourself. Okay. So, but I have a certain personality. Right. What would you say to that? So look, I can't speak to every industry again. Okay. Maybe in IT, uh, you don't have to be an outgoing, you know, enthusiastic <laughs> person, right? <laughs> and we're not picking on any people in IT. No, we're not. They're we're brilliant, not. and we all need them. Hundred percent. Okay. Be nice to us. <laughs> but in the role of a customer service, a customer service related job where you're talking to people all the time, being an introvert does not work for you whatsoever. You mm-hmm. have to be outgoing. And if you're going to be in an interview and, you're, and we're asking questions and they're like literally one word responses, like tell me about a time where, you know, this or this happened. By the way, we don't even like to ask those questions. And, you know, you'd be like, well, you know, it was a pretty cool experience. And, and that's pretty much it. Uh, it's showing us right now that you may have issues. Now, you could be nervous, and I'm not going to use this point because I know nerves play a big factor. We want to make these interview processes as relaxing as possible, but if you're shy and you're not really ex- kind of letting us know or see who you are, it could be going against you as well. Yeah, I mean, they say like, a note on nervousness. Don't try to suppress it. Nervous energy is energy. Right. It actually gives you something. Those that are high performers, imagine they're athletes, artists, they actually say, nervousness is what makes them perform and excel yes so that's a little kind of little secret you are going to have nervous energy you're going to maybe talk louder faster or get quieter whatever it is because you're trying to hold it in sell yourself this is your opportunity to look the other person in the eye to be present and say this is why i would be a great asset to the company yeah and by doing that you're doing what mike for the next point you're making a good impression can we say make a great impression Yeah, make a great impression yeah it's so important, and it's going to speak to our next point as well, that you make a great impression. And how can you make a great impression? There's a lot of things you can do that. First of all, it's kind of a little bit difficult now, but the eyes do speak more because of masks covering everyone's faces. But smile. Show us the joy that comes out of you. I mean, making a good impression by just having a very cool aura about you, smiling, laughing. I mean, at the end of the day, it shows me that you are, are, are someone that maybe I'm... A, I don't want to be around a negative person. Let's put it that way. Mm-hmm. I don't like negativity. And I'm not saying that people are negative when they come into interviews, but you could come across like that if you're just straight-faced. And be, and be genuine. You know, yeah. there's certain things, you know, uh, we had Chief uh, Stephen Tanner from uh, Halton Police who had said, be authentic. Right. Come in and, and be yourself. We, we say things to our teams when we take the floor. Be the person who mom loves. That's right. right? That's how we look at security. It's not uh, anything that you've seen that is a, a false sense of power and strength. It's who you are as a, as a, as a beautiful person. But, but I'll say, Mike, making a good impression uh, sometimes works in someone's favor, but sometimes it can work against their favor. See, what we like to do in the interview setting is that we want to create such a comfortable zone, such a, like, come and just chill and talk with me, mm-hmm. that we're trying to do that to ease the nerves of individuals. But what happens is sometimes they get so comfortable that they do this next thing. Well... <laughs> They use profanity. So what we'd say, don't use profanity and don't look like you've just rolled into your lunchroom or your own living room. Yeah, exactly. It it happens. It's just understand it can go there. And a lot of times people might think, okay, well, you know, maybe this is what they want to hear. But the amount of times that we've heard in interviews where someone would be like, yeah, I mean, I I was talking to my old boss and, you know, it was kind of effed up. And, you know, I'm like, what? Sorry? Like in my mind, I'm thinking, what did you just say? Um, You know, you broke script. You you broke professional conduct. Yes. And why that matters is our clients. I mean, look, this is how we look at the floor, the the actual work environment. None of our clients would appreciate that type of speech. That's right. Maybe that is how you speak even at home with your spouse, with mom and dad, who knows, around your kids. That's for you to do there. When we talk about a professional, there's a way that you conduct yourself that is beyond who you are. So as much as to our last point, make a good impression, be you. Yes. But also be professional. That's right. That's right. And the very last one, Mike, and this one actually is probably one that we throw out quite a bit through different platforms. Um, and that is show us why we should hire you over the rest. Yeah, which is great. I yes. mean, you know, this is your chance to not uh, not be so humble yes. that you're not taking the opportunity. Give us right. an idea what it is about you. There's a, a saying that I, I've heard before. If you were in a room with 10 people, why should it be you? That's right. Yeah. That's right. And by the way, Mike, when we're doing these little, con- you know, we're doing these discussions and, and talks to schools and we're giving them just information, the reality is this. We're in a very, very unique part of life. 
where there's so much competition out there right now that everyone is trying to get ahead of someone else. And at the end of the day, when we say, show us why we should hire you over the rest, if we just look at policing alone, mm-hmm. just policing alone, thousands of people apply to be police officers every single day. And at the end of the day, when you look at who gets selected, the question is, why did it select that person over the other? Because they did something maybe a little bit different, a little more unique. Maybe they used these nine points that we just went over, wink, wink, into their mix here. <laughs> but at the end of the day, you got to give yourself the edge, right? So show us what we should hire. Tell us. Tell us and prove it. If you're going to say, I am the best in all of the security industry, I'm the best in all of the nursing industry, better prove it. Better prove it. So make sure that when you tell us why you're better than the rest, that you can back that up as well. Yeah, and again, it's, that doesn't mean, don't misinterpret it. It doesn't mean be overly confident to the point that you're selling something that isn't you. Right. It's be authentic. Be yourself. You know, when when you say that, why should you be hired? You might say, because I know not that much and I'm willing to learn anything. That's right. So being authentic and honest might be saying that you are going to be the best student. No one will outwork you because you're committed to the process. Exactly. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Guys, there's nothing more than we want to see everybody succeed. We want to see people better themselves. Again, the Sentinel mindset is about shifting your mind and getting into a place to actually help you move forward. We hope you've enjoyed this segment. We would love you for if anyone has any ones that they would like to throw out, maybe you can throw them in the comments. You can definitely send an email. Maybe we can do a part two, but right now... Or come for an interview. Or come for an interview, exactly. (laughs) And test it out. That's right, that's right. So uh, put these into practice and you will succeed. Mike, any closing words? No, I think that's great. We're going to put that down. Put these into practice and you will succeed. And again, as you said off the top, this is for anything. This isn't just for the interview. These are things that can serve you well, maybe when you're meeting those future in-laws. There you go. Okay. All right, awesome. Have a great guys. Take care. Thanks. This podcast is brought to you by Executive Protection Lifestyle Canada. Make sure to drop by next week and don't forget to subscribe.